Multiple myeloma and chronic lymphocytic leukemia have largely overlapping epidemiologic features and their origin from mature B cells, but simultaneous occurrence of both diseases in a patient is rare. Rare, but it does occur. So we are here at the 2016 ASH meeting on hematologic malignancies in Chicago to discuss outcomes of patients with combined chronic lymphocytic leukemia and multiple myeloma, and to do so I'm with Dr. Boggy Delaria, who is an MD and in the Hematology Oncology Fellowship Program at Mayo Clinic in Jacksonville. First off, why did you want to do this study? Uh, interestingly, we had a patient with uh, multiple myeloma uh, who was having hemolytic anemia, so we call it event syndrome. So low hemoglobin and low platelet count at the same time. And in his bone marrow biopsy, we found that he had around 25% involvement by the CLL clone, which was separate from the multiple myeloma, and that was triggering that event syndrome. So uh, that raises a question that how frequently this happened, and does this concurrent uh, or s subsequent occurrence of CLL in patients with multiple myeloma changes the clinical course or treatment outcomes of the multiple myeloma because that's the worst of two of these malignancies. So you had a pretty large database you wanted to go through. Yeah, we uh, went through all three Mayo Clinic sites and uh, we had around 10,700 myeloma patients and around 7,700 patients with uh, chronic lymphocytic leukemia. Um, and we searched electronic medical record retrospectively and we come up with only 28 patients, but these were the patients who had uh, diagnosis of CLL um, along with uh, the multiple myeloma, and we studied those patients. So what did you find? Uh, so what the key finding of this study was that uh, the baseline CLL characteristically, most of these patients had incidentally found CLL in their bone marrow, so they were looking for multiple myeloma, we picked up the CLL clone. Uh, most of this patient has rise stage zero disease. There were, of course, few patients with higher risk cytogenetics, uh, mainly T53 in a CLL clone. Uh, but very few of these patients actually required CLL-directed treatment uh, after they were diagnosed with multiple myeloma. In fact, only three patients out of this 28 had any chemoimmunotherapy, and all these treatments were given before the myeloma was diagnosed. So none of the patients in the study group actually needed any treatment once they were started on some sort of myeloma treatment. And majority of these patients responded, including uh, around uh, 10 to 15 percent of patients has partial to complete response, and rest of the patient had stable disease, and there was no CLL progression during the follow-up period of the study, um, as long as they were being treated for multiple myeloma. Now, as you were looking for these, this particular pairing, were they pretty much in their records? It was clear that they, they did have both, so it's not that they're out there and they're just not findable. You looked for them and you found what others had found, and that is that they did have both. Yes, yes. So we, so few, half of the patient has already CLL before their myeloma diagnosed. Right. Few of them has at the same bone marrow. And there were, I think, two or three patients who had CLL on a subsequent bone marrow biopsy. Their clone was picked up or the lymph nodes of a biopsy and uh, the CLL or SLL clone was found on that one. So what did you find regarding treatment and response to treatment? Okay, interesting. So we uh, also select a random uh, patient with just diagnosis of multiple myeloma. We had around 56 patients we used as a control group which were matchable for age and the time of diagnosis of the multiple myeloma. And we compared those 56 patients with 28 patients with both combined CLL and multiple myeloma. Uh, and in terms of uh, baseline multiple myeloma characteristic, there was not much different in terms of age or M-smart fish categories. Uh, but coming to your questions, as far as the treatment responses go to first-line image or proteasome inhibitor, the responses were equal in both groups. Uh, at the same time, we also look at day 100 response after the stem cell transplant in both groups, and they were equal too. Uh, in terms of median overall survival, um, even though there was a numerical difference between the two groups, the p-value was not statistically significant. Um, so in, in conclusion, the having a CLL with the multiple myeloma did not affect the way you respond to your treatment with multiple myeloma or how long you're going to possibly live if you have, do not have CLL. So that's really interesting. And are you planning on taking any more uh, exploration of these particular patients? Actually, we are. So 
Um, one other question we asked is that, is this two clones, because they're both B cell origin malignancies, are they from the same clone, which they're differentiated differently, or they're two separate clones? And in this study, we just look at the light chain restriction pattern, and half of them has, roughly half of them has the same light chain, kappa lambda, between the CLR and myeloma clone, and other half has a different light chain. So this study did not uh, show that any, any strong correlation between these two malignancies. But again, this is a very limited way to look at this thing. The best way to, you need to do more uh, find uh, sequencing studies to immunoglobulin gene rearrangement, try to find out if you can track the same clone between the two malignancies. Um, so that will be probably the next step. That would be great. I would love to come back, please, when you, when you have that information. I'd love to talk to you again. You. Now at the ASH meeting on hematologic malignancies here in Chicago, please check ASH Clinical News for a lot of the coverage from this meeting, as well as here online, where I'm Rick McGuire, an executive editor for American Medical Communications.